Greetings, friends. It's me, Mark Anthony K, back with another edition of Mark's Vinyl Collection. Now, this week I'm uh, answering a request to delve a little bit more deeply into one of my uh, KISS albums that I've been collecting, which is going to be today focusing on the debut KISS album. I'll get this figured out sometime. There we go. Okay, so just a little quick background into the uh, information of this record. The KISS debut record was released on February 18th, 1974, was recorded between November, October and November of 1973, with the exception of the uh, added on single Kissing Time, which was recorded in April of 1974. The record was recorded at Bell Sound Studios in New York City and was produced by Kenny Kerner and Richie Weiss. The album had three singles off of it, uh, Nothing to Lose being the first one, released February 18th, 1974, uh, the same day, ironically, as the album. Uh, the second single was Kissing Time, which was released on May 10th, 1974, and the third and final single off the album was Strutter, which was released April, April, August 10th, 1974. Now, as far as chart performance for this record, the album uh, reached number 82, peaked as high as 82 in Canada, uh, reached surprisingly high in New Zealand, apparently, as high as 38, and uh, it reached number 87 on the U.S. Billboard charts and stayed on the charts for 22 weeks. Um, on, as far as the singles charts go, goes, uh, Kissing Time was released, obviously, as a second single, and that was the only one to chart, and that got as high as number 83 on the U.S. pop singles charts. Now, the album, initially, when it came out, uh, sort of stalled at around 75,000 copies after about a year that it was out. But eventually, it went gold in both Canada and the United States. Uh, the U.S. certification was announced at June 8th, 1977. So there's a little bit of background information on the album. Now, I have eight pressings of this album, and I'll just go through them here for you to see the little various differences and a little bit of background behind each one that I have. So, like I showed you at first, this here is a Canadian pressing of the first album, 1974, and you can tell because it is beaten to shit. Um, this one has Kissing Time on it, and what's interesting about this one is that this is a Warner version of it. Kiss originally, when they signed to Casablanca, they had a distribution deal with Warner Brothers that lasted only for this album. And uh, so there is versions of the album circulating out with Warner Brothers distributing it, and then a version of it without Warner Brothers doing it. So if you look in the back, let's see if I can do this. This is very... See at the bottom corner, you'll see Warner Brothers there, on the bottom right, here, yeah, there. And you'll also see it underneath there at the very, in the middle there, you'll also see it amongst all that wear and tear there. Now, let me take it out. This album um, was funny, the, the background about it, because how I actually found this record was in a, let me see, let me just get that here real quick. You'll see it says Warner at the bottom there. And as you can see, if I flip it around here, you'll notice that it does have Kissing Time first on it. So this record I actually found at a record store that also doubled as a mattress uh, store for some reason. Don't ask me why he was selling vinyl records and mattresses out of the same store. But 
just ironically, I went through into this store one time when I was in uh, this little town where my sister lived, and I decided to take a quick peek at some of these records, and lo and behold, I found this one, much to my surprise, so I took it out, checked it out, and at that point, I was still pretty early in my Kiss collecting, so I didn't really realize the significance of the Warner Brothers um, distribution for it, but I bought it anyways, and... I'm happy I did because it is quite a uh, not so easy to find pressing. So next up is my Canadian pressing of this record again, but this is now no longer a Warner Brothers version. This is now a quality records pressing of it. As you can see in the bottom over here. It says quality records right there. So that's uh now if you also notice on the bottom the other side there it says Casablanca Records for the US and Quality Records for Canada over on this side right here. So they've already ditched Warner Brothers by this point. Uh this record I found at a another records used record store, but this I was very happy to find this one because this one came turned out to be a really nice copy, surprisingly. As you can see there, NLP seven zero zero one, and on the flip side, you'll see again. Sing time on it. Now this copy is actually one of my more favorite ones to play. It surprisingly sounds good after all this time. It's nice and thick actually, surprisingly thick for the time period. And sounds fantastic. Um, it, all it took was one little run through my little spin clean and uh, it sounded fantastic. So. Quality records again hit it out of the park with those ones, with all those pressings. Next up, I have a 1980 pressing, German pressing, as you can tell by the altered Kiss logo, the what's called the censored logo with the double, double Zs, their reverse Zs. This is uh, out on Phonogram. That's the distributor in Europe for them. So this is a technically a West German pressing. If you look down at the bottom here, try to get the, the glare out of there. There we go. At the very bottom, you'll see printed in West Germany, and this is a phonogram distributed release. Now, the first couple, as you probably noticed, were blue label uh, versions of it. This one, by this point, by 1980, they had switched to the Casablanca Filmworks labels, as you can see here. Try to get the glare out of here, God. So, as you can see, I don't know if you can see that too well, but. try this side obviously there's a difference in it uh, the serial number is six three nine nine zero five seven on this one there you go that's a bit better kissing time on it of course by this point it's always been on there unless you have the white label uh, pro promo copy of this album that one doesn't have kissing time on it, nor does uh, one of the early Warner Brothers uh, US pressings also doesn't have kissing time on it. So that's West Germany. Next up, we have a US 1974 RCA Record Club version. Now, this looks just the same as every other uh, KISS 
the view from this point. But if you look in the back here, you'll notice right here is where it says RCA. And if you also notice the bottom, that address here is also kind of interesting because that says it they are at 1112 Sherburne Drive, Los Angeles. This is before they went to to uh, Sunset Sunset Boulevard there. Now this is a nice copy of the album as well. Sounds pretty good. Uh, I find this one is a little weak in the mid range as far as pressings go. Um, doesn't have the same kick as some of the earlier pressings. You see at the very top over the KISS logo you'll see the RCA indicator and underneath the year is the R134335 number that also indicates that it is an RCA copy. If you uh, flip that over on this side too. <laughs> okay. So the RCA pressings are not <coughs> overly difficult to find. Uh, nowadays I'm seeing them less and less show up whenever I see uh, auctions or on Discogs and stuff like that. So maybe they are getting a little bit tougher to find. But back when I got this copy, they they were around. They were floating around quite a bit. So uh, next up is my ooh is my. 1987 Japanese pressing. Now, this one originally was supposed to come with a yellow OB strip, and uh, the person I bought this off of did not have it at the time, but it was too good to pass up. Japanese pressings are incredible. Uh, this is uh, distributed by Polystar. There are three, I think, or four different uh, versions of the Japanese <coughs> pressings. This is the yellow. Obi one and it's also known as the crazy collection now if you turn in the back you'll see right there polystar which is a japanese distributor for this and as you can also tell when looking at this record it's absolutely like fantastic condition like as near mint as you can probably get I, i'd say it's like there's nothing wrong with this record at all which goes to show how well the Japanese people took care of their records. Now, just really quickly, before I show you the vinyl, the Japanese records usually came with a nice insert like this. Open it and it has all kinds of stuff. You'll notice there it says Kiss Crazy Collection. It has all the other albums that are within that series. In the back, you'll notice that it has the yellow strip at the top to also indicate that it was the yellow obi version of this record now the vinyl is absolutely beautiful for this it looks like it's probably never even been played except for when i got it now uh let's see if i can get this to show there you go Very nice on the Filmworks uh, center label. There you go. So the Japanese pressing. I have played this. Um, the interesting thing I find about Japanese pressings, to be honest, is that while they're pressed on really nice vinyl and they're very quiet as far as surface noise goes, sometimes some of their pressings can be a little flat uh, EQ wise. They don't seem to be um, enhanced in any sort of way. It almost seems like they're being cautious with the, when they did the mastering of it for, for the vinyl, um, which, is, which is sort of smart because on different systems, people adjust their systems differently person to person. So it probably sounds pretty solid on most people's uh, record players and I I find that this sounds great on mine 
had to make a little bit of an adjustment here and there, but on the whole it sounds great and it's very quiet, no pops or clicks or nothing like that. So I always recommend Japanese pressings. <clears throat> Next up is my US 1985 Polygram reissue. Again, this one looks very nice. Now, how do you identify a 1985 Polygram? Well, the first indicator giveaway is right there, that barcode on the top corner there. Now, if you look down at the bottom, okay, I'm gonna figure this out, guys. There we go. Where my fingers are here, oops, you'll also see Polygram records there. And another way to identify this sort of easily is the way the center label looks. You'll notice that sort of groove, the deep groove in the center there, that's sort of synonymous with the 83, 84, and 85 pressings. And you'll also notice at the very bottom of, this, of the center label, right down at the very bottom where the text is, you'll notice that it says marketed by Polygram Records. And that was, they only started doing that by 83, 84, and 85. They started doing that when Polygram had taken over Casablanca Records. Now, this pressing in particular sounds actually pretty solid. And uh, it's funny because I find that it's that way because of the man who mastered this one, and that's uh, Mr. Alan Zentz of Alan Zentz Mastering in California. He's always done superb work as far as mastering goes. And in fact, one of my favorite Kiss Alive pressings is not the Bob Ludwig, but in fact, the Alan Zentz pressing. So a couple left. This here is my 1984 UK priceless collection version of the record. Again, another nice version of it. Now, if you take a look here at the very top there, you'll see where it says price 68. That's an indicator of the priceless collection, which is uh, what this pressing is from, like the series that it's from, from the UK. Now, the UK had the priceless collection and Canada had them too. Canada did a priceless collection for Destroyer and for da Dynasty. Yeah, Dynasty. Um, they didn't do this album, but obviously the UK did do one here. Now, if you look here at the bottom there, you'll notice phonogram under my hand there is the distributor. Now, I'm going to take this out. It's another very lovely center label. I'll flip it over. Funny thing is, of all the different variations, I'm still yet to find what's known as a camel label version of it, which is a different center label um, that was out during 1976 for a short while. Um, hoping to find a version of that for the debut album to add to my collection. Now, last but not least is what lots of people are starting to consider a holy grail pressing is the 2014 US 180 gram reissue version of the album that Universal Music so beautifully did. Now, I had bought all these, listened to them once, put them away, hadn't listened to them for a very long time. There you'll see all the pertinent information at the bottom where the UME is, which is, stands for Universal Music. And also Island Records is right beside it as well. They must be in it together as a joint sort of venture. Well, I'm sure Universal Music is uh, the, the parent company. Very nicely done. 
Um, yeah, so I had put this away for a while, and I just put it, brought it out the last couple of days here and listened to this pressing as I did a lot of the 180-gram the reissues, and they did an absolutely stellar job at Abbey Road. I believe it's Sean McGee, I think, who did the mastering of this. They also It's also credited for uh, Capitol Records mastering is also credited for some of this as well. But I know Sean McGee is mainly credited for the stellar job that he did on this. You notice they went back to the original Blue Casablanca labels. And the interesting thing that I found on this is that they decided to go with the version that had Kissing Time on it. I've kind of wondered maybe why wouldn't they just go with the very, very original and leave Kissing Time off. I'm sure most Kiss fans probably wouldn't have cared. But, you know, I guess they wanted to be complete in that way. Very strong, beautiful vinyl. And just to conclude my story about the uh, remastering, I put it on my stereo and I have to say it's one of the best sounding pressings of this album I've ever heard, hands down. I mean, you can hear everything clearly. The sound staging on this is really, really good. I mean, you can hear all the room ambience and stuff a lot better on this pressing than on most other ones like i said before some of the pressings sometimes lack in the mid-range sometimes they might be a little bass heavy in some pressings but this one they seem to have nailed it right on the mark so if you're if you're unsure about getting yourself this version of the record don't be because it's absolutely fantastic and you won't be sorry with the sound of this record for sure so that's all eight of my different variants of the debut kiss album i hope that uh those of you who are asking about it um were satisfied with that little uh showing of the records and uh i will be showing other records not necessarily kiss ones other kinds of records or other bands records and stuff like that also, there will be a Project Gemini update very shortly. And there will be also another update shortly that I'm going to make about another little uh, video uh, podcast that I'm going to be doing with a friend of mine, which I think some of you might be very, very interested in watching. So stay tuned. And uh, yeah, until next time, this is Mark Anthony K saying thank you. And I'll talk to you guys again soon.